Hello all, welcome to another workbench video from me, Matt Wicks. Uh, today I'll be showing you basically how to renumber a model or a locomotive model. You can see in front of me here we have a standard four tank made by Backman and a number of tools and transfers which are in front of me. I'm using a little Pico foam loco cradle which is quite useful for uh, doing maintenance and transfers etc um, and it protects the loco from any damage um, you can see behind the loco here we have some enamel thinners which is used to get rid of the number printed on the side of the model you can also see a cotton bud which will be used to work the print loose from the actual model itself of course after that the next thing will be to put new numbers on which I would suggest is to look at your transfers. Here we have uh, some HMRS press fix transfers, sheet number 14, which is BR Steam Era Loco and Coach Insignia. Uh, it's always best to check uh, the size of numbers on your model compared to the ones on the transfer sheet. They will be slightly under on the transfer sheet due to the printing and also most ready to run model locomotives are slightly larger from what are on tra transfer sheets. Uh, with that said, uh, basically what you have to do is use some enamel thinners to soak the numbers to get them off. Now it's not worth just if you've got a couple of digits on the end to change because you'll find as I just mentioned the numbers on the model are bigger than the transfers you're putting on so it's worth getting rid of the whole number so you won't have some bigger and some smaller. Right, so let's get started on this model. Now, as most of you know, I uh, modelled for Bluebell Railway, and I still do, although I haven't used it very often uh, this year or, or since last year, since moving to the Isle of Wight. Um, now, I've already got uh, a model 80151, um, which is the local, which is currently under overhaul, I think, uh, at the Bluebell. Um, now this one, obviously they have, I think another two, they have 80100 and also the one which ran I think up until the 1990s which is 80064 which is the one I'll be doing today. Now on some models you also need to redo the crest but on this one I don't have to, it's still an early crest uh, locomotive on the picture I have of it anyway. Um, so I can leave the crest alone, that's not a problem, but it'll be still using the same method if you need to replace it. Um, so basically this one just needs a renumber, which is quite straightforward and nice and simple. So let's get started. Right, so the number itself is quite easy to get off, but also I try and not use masking tape or any other tape to seal off any other areas. Because what happens is the thinners will seep underneath and then it will transfer to the surrounding areas. With Batman models, um, the printing is quite light and it will come off quite easily. This is a later model with the opening smoke box door, so hopefully it'll be a little bit better. But um, I try not to use any tape just so it doesn't remove anything else because this is very easy to remove. So I just use the actual area itself. Now I'll try and avoid not removing the number four, which is above the number, which is the, the uh, power class classification. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just dab the um, cotton bud in some thinners, and what I will do is just apply it over the number. Now, as I mentioned, it's best to remove the whole number. You don't want to remove just the end numbers because the end numbers will be smaller than the other numbers which is a right pain so it's best to remove the whole number so you just need a little bit of thinners on your cotton bud and what I'm going to do is just go over the number and let it soak in as you can see it's already running down which I really don't want it to do so you're best to keep it flat but for the camera I'm trying to keep it angled towards you so you can see what I'm doing now once that has soaked in, it will allow the numbers to be removed a little bit easy, or easier. Um, 
and then all you'll need to do is just rub it until it actually comes off. So after a few minutes of letting it uh, just sort of soak into the numbers, uh, you can just about start rubbing it off. You don't have to apply too much pressure to the numbers or, or the um, cotton bud to get them off. As you can see it's coming off quite easily after a little bit of a soak. Uh, what this will do is basically polishing the surface. It's a bit, I mean you can use tea cut or brasso or, or whatever to actually remove the numbers as well. Um, you don't have to use thinners if you don't want to, but uh, I generally do because that's what I have been using recently. That's what I've been shown to use as well. You can also use a tool which has got like a spinning rubber on the end which is shown in another video on the um, conversion of the LBSC uh, E4 which I transferred to Birch Grove. Um, I used it on there which is again a little bit easier but you have to be very careful with the um, pressure you apply to the um, actual tool to remove it because you can burn through the paint quite quickly. As you can see with a little bit of effort, you don't have to press very hard, it's um, coming off quite easily. So after about five minutes of um, working with a cotton bud and some bit of thinners, you can see the number has disappeared. Now you can just leave the thinners to just dry off, or you can use a bit of uh, um, paper towel just to dab it off. So it doesn't go on to anything else. But as you can see, I preserved the number four and also the lining, which is great. Which will mean I won't have to actually do anything else to it. Uh, you'll be able to see some faint signs of a number just drying off now, um, which is still probably a little bit printed onto the actual bodywork, but we'll clear that off eventually. Um, when you've actually worked the surface, what actually happens is the surface is now shiny. Most models are finished in a satin sort of varnish just to sort of um, not make them too gloss. Although Hornby seems to be going for a gloss phase at the moment, making them rather shiny. Um, I generally use satin. Um, the odd one out which I've done recently for somebody is uh, one of the O2s from Kerno. That has a more matte finish to it, so uh, I've been using some Hombril spray varnish, um, I think it's acrylic I've been using, to um, just sort of um, coat the transfers in. Um, and as I say, it's, it's, it's a bit strange because most of the models are satin varnished. Um, that one is more matte. So just put that in your notes if you're going to renumber an LSWR 02, or a Kerno 02 I should say. Um, but that's what I've generally found, most logos are satin varnish. Um, so you can use Humbrol, you can use um, Verdeo like I use, or uh, another manufacturer if you wish. Once all the um, once all the actual uh, thinners are dried off, what you can do is then start putting the numbers on. Right, so onto the numbers themselves. Um, having measured the, the uh, numbers before actually removing them, uh, the numbers are just over three millimeters, about three point two um, tall. So uh, if we have a look on the transfer sheet here. Zoom out and update so you can see it a bit easier. This is the HMRS sheet. Uh, it does a number of locos. You can see early crest, big crest, etc. Um, and also some uh, coach transfers. Uh, the numbers that we need, which are the right size or just under the size that we had, are these ones in this area here. These are about the right size. They're just under 3.2 millimeters um, and it's basically a backing sheet now all you have to do is score around the number you need and um, just peel it off with a knife and some tweezers and then these are sticky backs so they stick onto the loco themselves apply a little bit of water and then the top sheet comes off um, what I would recommend you do is how I've been shown is to work outwards from the middle. So the middle number on this is I think it's a zero because we're going to do it in eight zero six four. 
um, well, 8064 I should say, sorry. Um, and then um, place the middle number under the 4, what you can see there, which marks the middle. And then work outwards from that number. It gives you an, a nice equal spread. And also, you won't look a bit weird if they're spaced wrongly. Um, so it's quite easy to do. And I'll show you how to do that next. Right, what I've done is basically scored a line underneath the numbers that I require. So I basically need the 8, the 0, many zeros actually, two zeros, and a 6 and a 4. So I've basically scored a straight line under all the numbers which are the correct size. And as I mentioned, I'll be needing a 0 to start off with because I'll be starting from the middle of the number sequence. Uh, it is probably worth mentioning now, you can see on the camera at the moment, you can see the numbers that I require, which are these two rows here. But you can also see a small row of numbers above. Now those are the power classification of a locomotive. Uh, this one's a 4, so if you do accidentally remove the 4 on your uh, model, then you can easily pick one up from here if you can actually see it. I probably would suggest a magnifying glass at that point. Um, it's probably worth mentioning you do get variations in regional locomotives. Um, one loco that I had, which was 80151, uh, was a Scottish region locomotive when I purchased it, um, which meant I needed smaller numbers, um, which I got caught out on a little bit because I got the wrong ones. Um, so basically the, the British region standard 4s are smaller numbers so you require the ones that we're looking at at the moment uh, the Scottish region 1s have the bigger numerals which are on this sheet as well so what we need is a 0 to start off with I've also already scored under these ones which you can see just above and below so what we just need to do is to go around that number like so. Just put your knife underneath, just flick it up. And that's pretty much removed from the actual transfer sheet. What I will do now is get some tweezers and place that in the center of the, uh, of the numerals. Right, so just applying them to the loco now. Um, basically all I need is some tweezers, which you can see here I've already got it stuck on the end of some tweezers here. And as I say, these numbers are sticky back, so it's uh, not too bad to uh, sort of float them in water and position them. Um, which I quite like about these transfers, you don't have to use uh, water to float them in, they're sticky back and they stay where you put them. Um, so we're starting with a zero, which you can see here on the backing paper. We just position them in alignment with the number 4, which is where I want it. There we are. And as the tops and the bottoms of the numbers have already been uh, scored with a steel rule, um, that will allow me to line them up in a straight line. And once you're happy with the position, you can add a little bit more pressure to the number and that will fix it in place. Uh, if you wish to remove it as you go, then you just need a paintbrush and a bit of water, and that will come straight off. Okay, a few minutes in, f in the future, after applying a few more of the numbers, you can see it's a little bit messy in a way, but that's because of the uh, light actually reflecting off of the stickiness off the surface after you put the number on and move it around a little bit just to make sure it's in the correct position. Uh, if I put my hand over as you can see it's a little bit uh, easily readable. Um, but as you can see we have put on the 8, the other 0 and the 6 and the last one to go on is the 4. Um, the number where we started off is underneath the 4 which is the 0 but as you can see it's uh, uh, been a lot easier to get an easier spread of them and you should have about five and a bit millimeters 
either side of the numbers which this model does have after putting all the numbers on um, and you can see I've been working letter or number by number um, out from the zero we originally placed and as you can see that's enabled us to have a nice equal spread of the numbers on this model um, if I take my hand away just for a minute I can show you how to remove the backing film of these numbers now all you need is a bit of water and a paintbrush all you need to do is put a bit of paper on uh, a bit of water on the transfer after you're quite happy with the position and let it soak up the, uh, the water after a while it should absorb that water enough to actually allow it to slide off of the number itself now this is going to take a little little time but as you can see it is absorbing the water from the paintbrush so after a few seconds hopefully that should uh, soak it all up and allow for backing paper to come off um, this job generally should take you 15-20 minutes just to put the number on and if you're happy then the uh, paper should come off what I like about these transfers as I mentioned is they're, they have a sticky back on them so when you apply each number individually when you come to put some water on this one next to the 6 this one doesn't go floating off somewhere which occasionally does with the water slide ones which is what I quite like about these uh, press fix numbers, they uh, they stay put when you uh, add another one. Now, if I just wipe the brush around, hopefully, there you go. The four should come off. There you go, and that leaves the number four in place where you put it, so it doesn't move around, etc. And there you have the number itself left on the tank or the bunker of the standard 4 tank now after after that I'm wiping it all off and dabbing it uh, with your paper towel after this stage after you've done that you can just sort of uh, put a bit of card with a hole in it in the area and give it a spray varnish of uh, satin or matte uh, varnish and just allow it to dry off for a, possibly a day or so if, if you're really precautious like I am um, and uh, just let it dry out thoroughly and then you should have a nicely numbered bottle like that and obviously I do this for other people as well not just myself um, if you're not confident about it then it's probably best to allow someone to do it um, but if you're sort of wanting to do it and probably cut a little cost out of it, you're probably looking at possibly ten, twenty pounds um, to do this job, which is a nice little job to do. Uh, time, effort, materials, transfers, etc. Filtering all that in, that's probably the cost you're looking at. Anyway, I hope you've learned something from this video, and I hope this video has given you a little bit of confidence to give it a go. As you've seen in this video, this is a Backman model. A Hornby model would probably be a little bit more tough, say, before, uh, say, 2013. If your model's pre-dating that, maybe a little bit earlier than that. Say if you've got a Blue Pacific from the early or mid-2000s, uh, from when they started doing the, uh, the high detail range of models, it'll be a little bit harder to get off, which is expected, to be quite honest with you. Uh, because the process of uh, tamper printing uh, where they put the paint on a uh, sort of rubberized thing and then come down and press it they go through it in stages you know a number of number of passes through that print um, you know I mean a, a logo for, for this say uh, say this emblem for example that are probably taken nearly 50 passes or 20 passes through a tamper printing machine so it'll take a while to come off. Um, but with this number you probably have a couple of passes for the number. And um, it will take time to come off. Um, but I hope 
this video has been informative and I hope it has helped you give you some confidence into renumbering the loco yourself. If you want me to renumber a loco for you, just drop me a message on here or via Facebook. If you go onto Facebook, you can find my uh, uh, model page there as well as um, a loco modeling page. So if you require some help or assistance, just drop me a message. I should be able to give you a price if it's kit building or renumbering. Uh, as I say, it'll probably cost you about 10, 20 quid. Um, and while I'm on the subject, if you want to renumber the front of your loco, if I turn it around, um, as you can see, it still has the original number on it, 80053. If you want to renumber it and give it a new uh, shed plate, it'll probably cost you a little bit extra if you want that done as an etch. Um, which I would probably recommend to give it an etch plate on the front. Um, but there are numbers available to do uh, the front number. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful for you. And I hope that uh, you will do this yourself and give it a go yourself. Um, you know, sharing some help and sharing some skills to give you the confidence to go forward and do it yourself.